What do you think of when I say learning? A lot of people will picture a traditional classroom with the teacher talking up the front, filling the empty vessels with knowledge from the textbook. Learning is defined as the act of acquiring new or modifying and reinforcing existing knowledge, behaviours, skills, values or preferences. While the focus has previously been on acquiring knowledge, it's becoming increasingly known that learning involves all aspects of a person's life and that learning in any of these areas is beneficial in the development of a young person. All these areas cannot be improved by simply reading a textbook and that is why learning is a more complex subject than most people believe. Traditionally, educators believed that learning occurred through repetition and dictation. The deliverance of content was more important than the learning process. Unfortunately, this is still the case in a lot of classrooms today. Teachers often don't allow for students to be engaged in their learning. Creativity isn't encouraged and students don't see the relevance in what they are learning. Standardised curriculums are taught and tested and students' individual learning is not catered for. Fortunately, many people have seen this problem within our schools and many theories have been developed to explain the actual learning process. There are four main theories that revolve around learning. Constructivism, social and emotional learning, cognitivism and connectivism. Piaget's constructivism learning theory focuses on the connection of personal experiences with prior knowledge in order to construct a personal subjective understanding of a topic. Constructivism states that knowledge that is acquired through second-hand experiences is not obtained long-term and therefore learning needs to actively involve students in relevant activities or experiences that allows them to solve problems and develop ideas themselves. The cognitive learning theory pertains to a very important part of the learning process, how the mind actually learns. It is a psychological theory that attempts to explain the way in which our minds learn by understanding our thought processes. The cognitive theory attempts to explain how our brain reacts to extrinsic and intrinsic factors and how it then processes those inputs into learning. Metacognition is a part of the cognitive learning theory and refers to actually thinking about how we think. With effective cognitive processes, learning is much easier and more effective. Social and emotional skills are essential for someone to have in order for them to succeed in school, work and life. The social and emotional learning theory refers to developing these skills in order to succeed but also to maximise learning. SEL is broken down into five areas, self-management, self-awareness, social awareness, relationship skills and responsible decision making. When the social and emotional needs of the students are taken care of and these five skills are developed, many positive responses follow, such as decreased stress, improved social behaviour and fewer conduct problems. This improves the learning ability and academic success of all students. The traditional view of education does not take into consideration the way students actually learn. By understanding these learning theories, we can know how our students' learning process truly occurs. To ensure students interact in an ideal learning environment, a combination of these theories must be implemented. Hence, a more cogent learning theory is created. The overarching basis of this theory is social and emotional learning. By developing students' social and emotional skills, the learning environment will be improved and students will learn more effectively. An environment in which students are struggling on a social and emotional level is an environment in which they will struggle to learn. The second theory contributing to more cogent learning is the cognitive learning theory. As an educator, it is essential to consider the thought processes behind learning and to get students to reflect on their own learning process in order to improve. For effective learning, students must be able to identify and overcome roadblocks to learning, which is only possible through implementation of the cognitive learning theory. The constructivist theory is an important part of the learning theory for it should shape the learning activities and teaching strategies in a classroom. Through activities that give students the opportunity to connect previous knowledge with experiences, students will develop creativity and have a more effective learning process. The final aspect to our cogent learning theory comes from Howard Gardner and his theory of multiple intelligences. His theory states that we all learn in different ways and in our teaching we must cater to all learning styles. By implementing into the classroom social and emotional learning, cognitive learning and constructivist learning, 
a very resultant learning environment is created. Then, on top of that, Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences is used, all students will be reached and a great learning environment is created. It is essential that educators have a sound understanding of these learning theories and are able to sufficiently apply it to their classrooms. If these theories are used in the classroom, you will be catering for all students' needs and be facilitating an effective, comfortable learning environment.